Hong Kong born Olivia Chow is now the mayor of Toronto, Canada. That makes her the first non-white mayor in the city's history. David, the internet is buzzing about this. Everybody is talking about it. They have their opinions. And uh, also everyone's asking, is Canada good? getting taken over by Chinese or not. Wow, I am so proud of Olivia Chow. She's probably going to have dinner with Drake and probably, you know, no Masa Yuri from the Raptors. Yeah, I hope that uh, Drake lets the light dim some and that Susu Lee comes out and makes the food. Yeah, <laughs> then we got Ken Sims in Vancouver. Then we have Trung and uh, London, Ontario as the police chief. It is great. All right, guys, we got to talk about Olivia Chow. Shout out to her. I don't know her politics, um, but she seems like a nice lady. Uh, seems like a smart lady. But anyway, she won a really close race after 14 years of having a conservative mayor of Toronto. She is the first liberal mayor in 14 years. Um, and she won after that mayor resigned, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, here's a little quick background from her. She's originally from Hong Kong, immigrated at 13. She started on the school board of trustee. Uh, she was married to the former leader of the DNP, which is the Demo like the Democratic the, one. The liberal party. The liberal one. Uh, she was in the parliament, then ran for mayor in 2014. She lost. She was became a professor. Then she ran again recently, and now she won. Uh, she speaks Cantonese, Mandarin, and English. She was doing some interviews recently in Cantonese and English. So I guess... Uh, it's just a new face and a lot of new things are going on and kind of like shocking some Torontonians. Yeah, I think people are surprised that Ken Sims, Andrew, who's Canadian born, won in Vancouver, and he's also married to an Indian wife. Uh, I think that people are really surprised that she, Olivia Chow, won in Toronto. Andrew, these are the two biggest cities in Canada with the biggest population, biggest economy. The most important cities in Canada are run by Cantonese people now. All right, we're going to be breaking it down. Hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we talk about Canadian politics. Andrew, we polled a very real uh, Canadian friend of ours who is Chinese, and he gave you his honest breakdown of Olivia Chow. Did he this not? Guy's, this is a pretty smart guy. He's very proud of being Canadian and Chinese. She, he said, uh, it's cool that she's Chinese, but I think she's not well-versed to run a city that needs funding. I think she will be a one-term mayor, if I had to be honest. It was a little bit surprising that she won anyway, since she didn't do particularly well in the debates and ran a weak platform. But per I do like the Vancouver mayor, Ken Sims. Uh, but of course, for Toronto, I wish the best. Yeah, I mean, was this pretty real of him to say that? Yeah. He said, I'm wishing the best for Olivia Chow, you know. Canto's yeah. got to rep for each other. Yeah, but yeah, at the yeah. same time, he was on a policy yeah, level. He was keeping it real. He's a little skeptical. And I think the reason why, and I'm not, I don't know all the details, but I guess because she might not be fully experienced in what Toronto needs. Now, that doesn't mean she can't do a good job, but I guess people are skeptical. But anyways, guys, uh, before we get into the comment section that has everything from inflammatory to complimentary to celebratory to negative, uh, David, what, what are your thoughts, your quick thoughts? I think one of my most uh, more selfish thoughts, and this is Andrew, we're all biased and have human nature, you right? You may we, be a human. Do, I may be a human, was like, yo, man, would it be like have been more fun to grow up in Canada? Like, literally, I'm just asking on a probability level. Obviously, I love growing up in America. All the cool subcultures come out of America more than they do yeah. Canada. But I'm just talking about, like, comfortability-wise. Yeah, yeah, no. Does it seem like there's more, like, comfortable upbringings for Chinese in Canada? Yeah, I think if you want to grow up and be proud and be fluid in your Chineseness and not feel like so much racism or so much pressure. I think growing up in Canada is great, especially in Vancouver or Toronto. Just ask Canto Mando. Shout out to them. I mean, Simu's from Canada, Jackson Wang, Godfrey Gao, RIP. It almost yeah. like, feels I mean, like a lot of like, Edison was from Canada. Yeah, I'm not lot. saying there's no struggles in Canada, but obviously we're just saying it might be a little bit more comfortable. Um, And my other thought was, man, I think it's really, really, really difficult to be the mayor of any major North American city right now. To be honest, I think that it would be the equivalent, Andrew, of inheriting a rusty bicycle with like 20 heavy suitcases on the back of the bicycle. And then somebody giving you a bunch of very difficult navigation missions to drive around the city. And at some point, Andrew, your bicycle's about to break. The tire's about to go flat. You already know it's rusty. You start dumping priorities off the back, even though you want to take them all with you. You can't. And guess what, Andrew? Some people are like, that was my priority. I hate you. And that is why the mayors of any major North American city, it's almost like 40 to 60% of people 
always hate them. Yeah, I think being a politician really sucks right now because I thought that everybody could be united over around what makes a city great, but now those things are breaking down and now part of the city hates you and part of the city loves you and uh, yeah, nothing's gonna make everybody Impossibly, happy. Impossibly, Andrew, that is just a feature of the ultra individualism of late, late stage capitalism. Anyway, let's get in the comments section. Andrew, somebody said, Vancouver and Toronto now both have Chinese mayors. It'll take about 10 years to see what will come of this? Mm. I'm kind of a, I'm not rooting against them, but I'm just a little skeptical as a white Canadian. Yeah, and then someone said, Canada has been colonized by Europeans, and now it is colonized by China. Fair enough playing field. Right, I mean, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's colonized by China. Although these are people of Chinese descent, Olivia is from Hong Kong. She was born in British Hong Kong, by the way. Um, like we said, everybody's perspective on an issue is driven by like the life that they've lived and the lens that they see life through. So I can totally understand some skepticism. Obviously, now that both of the major cities are run, uh, you know, not run, but like the mayors are Chinese. Somebody said, you know, I love Olivia Chow's speeches about let's bring everybody together to work together for a better future. But literally, this has never, ever happened before. So mm. I don't know. I mean, these just feel like nice, like Obama style speeches. Right. Somebody said, uh, you know, she won't actively make things worse, but I have zero faith that she will actually fix something. Somebody said, yeah, well, she can't really get anything done because no, nothing works in the face of big money. Uh, everything will just stay the same and she'll be the scapegoat for the future. Do you think, Andrew, if she has a downside mayorship, it will hurt the chances of like other Asians getting elected in the future? I think in the short term, it would be, it would be a bad look if she fails horribly, you know, and if she shows up to be weak and everything, obviously if also Ken Sims, I think generally Ken Sims, most people like what he's doing in Vancouver. He's very moderate, right? But it's very unclear how well Olivia Chow will do because she seems to be, I guess, a little bit less experienced in this sense of running a city the like this. The calmer side, from what I heard, guys, like I said, I you don't know, know. You know, I'm not know. the most versed on Canadian in internal domestic know federal about, politics. I don't know about Canadian politics. I do know that Olivia Chow was the first bilingual mayor of Toronto, though, Andrew, because Toronto is famous for being very bad at French, mm, despite yeah. French being one of the, uh, you know, main languages for federal politicians, obviously, in Canada. That's really interesting. But Ken Sims does speak French, and he actually does not speak Chinese. Somebody, uh, Andrew, we got to move on to the spicy section. Oh, my gosh. Andrew, some people, um, a lot of people... Obviously, that were against Olivia Chow are accusing her of being a CCP plant. And even some people said that Ken Sims is compromised. Of course, of course. Anybody who has a drop of Chinese blood, I bet if they just look Chinese, I bet if these people were Korean or Taiwanese, a lot of people would even make the same jokes, man. That's the sad thing. Uh, but anyways, obviously, there's a slew of comments. First of all, you know what's funny is that People get to leave comments no matter where they live. These people could not even live in Canada and they get to leave these comments. Or they could be realistically, Andrew, in, uh, what is it, Ottawa or Manitoba? Yeah, whatever. You know, the, the Garth Brooks zone. I know there, there, there's Winnipeg one. or, yeah, anywhere, yeah. The, uh, any of those places that are above, like, the more rural places, North right? Dakota, yeah. right? Yeah, so I'm saying, like, it. of course it doesn't matter what they say, but there's always that, like, joke or that fear that everybody's trying to like you know drum up like, oh she, she's all oh, china's taking over because we got two chinese faces yeah i get why visually you think that because it's such a quick and big change in your opinion but these are also the biggest cities if you had lived in vancouver or toronto you already know that it's super diverse 14 percent indian 10 percent chinese alone or 14 percent south asian and 10 percent chinese alone just in toronto so i'm like guys like chill you know what's really interesting andrew is in canada at one point i feel like canada i think was like so white that the french franco whites and the anglo whites used to not get in like beef but like used to argue about how french or english you know certain right. zones used to be so they're kind of like arguing you know i guess they could get united in their skepticism of the chinese mayors okay, but is it weird everything is being racialized or should i say geopoliticized um, I think that everything is at peak diversity, but for some reason, people are not like fully handling it as well as I would have guessed. I, of course, anybody would guess that there would be some sort of friction, but it just seems like the friction is being amplified by social media. And, and perhaps it is more of an internet thing than IRL thing though. Man, you know what, man? I wish there was like some show or movie or like series about trying to solve 
the race wars. But a lot of people don't want to talk about it. No, man. We're talking about it on our channel because we're not scared. Man, I'm trying to like trying to talk about it, man, because both sides ain't doing what they're supposed to do. Anyways. Um, of course, there was a lot of arguing about, no, she is from British Hong Kong. She is uh, not like with mainland China. And someone said, but oh yeah, I don't hear her really say that much about it because at the end of the day, some of her Toronto base is still kind of patriotic to mainland China, even though they're Canadian citizens now. So I need to hear more anti-Chinese words from her for me to trust her. But obviously, Andrew, uh, that's kind of like a very, I guess, Western or more of a white perspective, right? Like, right. I can't trust you till you disavow the old land. Right, you better hate China once you become mayor. Because that's what's going to make me feel safe. you Chairman Chow Anyways, instead of Chairman Mao eating bows. Uh, this comment right here is, nothing undercuts the pro-Beijingers constant claim how racist the West is more than democratic elections. Add to this, Ken Sims is mayor of the biggest city in Vancouver. Uh, all the members of Canadian Parliament that China tried to influence recently. I guess, like, they're just saying, like, hey, guys, look at Canada. They're pretty open. It's not racist, right? Yeah. Andrew, what do you think about the whole comment section that was saying, oh, yeah, we're turning it into China, duh. Why? It's not even Canada anymore. It's China, duh. I mean, Andrew, we have to address this fear, right? Because I don't know what the truth is. I don't know if there was any sort of, like, I, I payoffs think, or... Uh, I don't know. Think about it. The question is, how did it become that way? Who let it become that way? And why is that bad? Is it bad? How bad is it? And who let it become that way? Who got bribed? Or who figured out that maybe this Asian person does a good job? Right. Or who, like, whose culture, food is whatever? Like, how did it become who like Who took that? the honey pot, guys? Like, Somebody had to eat the honey guys, to take the honey pot. China did not put boots on the ground and physically take over Canada. China has not done that. That's why the Nemoidians, I knew that they were going to use the roundabout circumventing tactics. Um... Uh, there was another comment saying that Andrew Mandarin and Cantonese are the number one and number two most spoken languages outside of English and French in Canada. So it totally makes sense. Or I mean, I mean in Toronto, I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess uh, David. Overall, in the takeaways, man, how, what do you think about like how just nobody can? It seems like nobody can agree on anything, man. Like even yeah. in Toronto, a place that you and you mean in Toronto? Toronto. Toronto. It's so diverse. Everybody celebrates the diversity there. It's like in New York City. It's kind of like, you know, Canada's New York. Well, it's called, it's referred to as Canada's New York, right? Right, right. Or New York of the North or whatever it is. Like, I think like, it's kind of, I mean, it's crazy to see somebody who looks like our Guma, like, you know, get elected or someone who feels like. Andrew, that is auntie from Happy Valley. Palmade. <laughs> auntie Chow, auntie Chow. Yeah. But then uh, it's, it's just so crazy that like, it's always getting racialized and geopoliticized, man. Yeah. Maybe it's just the internet. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, um, I just think there needs to be more shows, like you said, to help people get over it. And there needs to be more direct talk about it. I like, that's why I like comedy sparking discussion. And I think people realize that the more they talk about it, the more they like can accept these others differences. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they may never fully see eye to eye, like 10 out of 10, but you just want to get people like, even like five or six out of 10 on the same yeah. page. You know what it is? I personally, I do feel like that. I just hope she's the right person for the job. I care a little bit that she's Chinese. I think it's cool. Yeah. And that is progressive. That's cool to see. But also, if she were to fail, I don't think it's worth it. Right. You because, say some sort of Alberto Fujimura situation in Peru. Yeah, because not only is it a bad look on Chinese people, I don't really, like that's the secondary. I really think that the worst cities get which it's harder to agree on what makes a city bad. Right. But the worse cities get, the more people are going to be mad and angry and extreme right. You know about their opinions. So it's almost like I just want cities to get better, things to get better, first and foremost, whoever that may be for the job. And yeah. then from that way, we can have like these easier conversations, it seems like. Yeah, like you said, man, I think that right now we're at a point where it's almost like if, Andrew, this group, like, let's say a city's made up of like 10 buckets of people. Somebody's bucket goes down 5%, but another bucket's person's bucket goes up 15%. That person that's bucket went down 5% is just mad about that. And they don't care that this other group of people that they don't care about, their bucket went up 15%. 
Right. And, and that's for like every group. I'm not like pointing at a uh, political side that's guilty right, of this. This right, is like right. both sides. Exactly. So anyways, guys, you let us know in the comments down below. Are you hopeful for Olivia Chow? Do you care? Uh, what does this mean? I mean, she's the mayor of the biggest city in Canada. What about when will we have... Uh, an Asian mayor of the biggest city in America. I don't know. And, and why does it seem like maybe the UK, you know, they have Rishi Sunak and now there's Olivia Chow and, you know, Ken Sim over here in Canada. Why does it seem like US and maybe Australia like kind of behind? I don't know. Is it whose fault is it? Or maybe nobody. Will the Asians help save the new world? We will see. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below. Until next time, we are the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.